Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the H. Moser & C. Endeavor Perpetual Calendar. This is the signature watch of the brand, and the timepiece, which is 40.8 millimeters in pink, gold is a brilliantly executed compound complication with most of the complexity hidden. So being 40.8 millimeters in diameter, it is also 11.5 millimeters thick, which makes it thinner than you might expect. 49.2 millimeters is the distance from lug to lug, and 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. We'll throw this watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and it fits beautifully. Uh, it's under 50 millimeters from lug to lug, but it's the shape of the case and the lugs that makes it viable on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. You can see it's nowhere near overlapping the edge of my wrist. It is easily flat enough with a slow sloped bezel that it could fit underneath a dress cuff, but look at the case back here. The case back features a cambered sapphire, very expensive to make and make water resistant, and then the curvature of the watch is really more like a tonneau than a round case, so the ergonomics are superb. Here we have a leather strap. This is the kudu strap that's used by Moser on many of its premier pieces. Brown with a brown stitch. It's bolstered to give it some thickness. It has a sheer cut side showing the layers of leather. And then there's a more conventional brown calfskin on the bottom. Taking a quick look at the buckle, it is Moser's with a deployant action, and this is rare on Moser watches. You generally just get a pin buckle from them. So this lovely satinated and polished deployant clasp, which guards against dropping your watch, uh, this is a nice upscale option that is not universal on these models, but the original owner opted for it, and that's to your benefit. The case band is gorgeous. The Endeavor case is only possible because Moser machines and hand finishes its case, so you can't stamp a case that looks like this. Stamping is the most common method of fabrication in mass manufacture within the industry. But to get these lovely concave mirrored hollows on the flanks of the case, you need to machine all this and then hand finish, and that's exactly what they do. There's a wonderful fluid, almost flame-surfaced look to this case, and you can see that the mid-case uses a sliver of vertical satination, and that's true on both sides. The lug recesses are beautifully concave, cave and mirror polished, the lug hoods are polished, and then there's a little bit of a transitional bevel on the flanks. The bezel is concave all the way around, stepped in from the case band to create the impression of a thinner watch, and then it swells dramatically at both 12 and 6 o'clock. The mid-case at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock is actually quite thin. The bezel thins out at the mid-case, so a lot to love right there and quite a bit of nuance. The bezel is polished too, which reflects light in gorgeous fashion. The dial is one of Moser's signature fume designs, so it fades from light at the center to dark at the edge. This is a gray sunburst metallic, and you can see it has a sunken register for small seconds. We do have a hacking seconds function, so you can set the watch to the second against a reference. Faceted leaf style hands in rose gold. We also have our indices, applique in rose gold. There's a power reserve indicator at nine o'clock. It's a manual wind watch. The rated power reserve is seven days, but in fact, it'll run for almost nine before it actually stops. Andreas Streller, who is an ace independent watchmaker and one of the AHCI greats. AHCI is like the cool kids club of independent watchmakers. He designed this system for Moser back in the 2000s when the model was called the Moser Perpetual. And what's cool is that this perpetual calendar can be adjusted in both directions. The way it works is you have a little index at center, the little triangular index. It works on the basis of 12 hours equaling 12 months. So right now you can see that the index is pointed at 19, or it's pointed actually at 1, and the date is 19. And as I move forward, that little index will advance to two. So now it is February 1st. Now we are back to the 31st of January. And that's how it works. The first index is January, the second is February, and so on and so forth until you get to December. Now taking a quick look at the reverse side of the watch, and by the way, I want to show you something that makes this date special. You can see that little, that little overlap between those two discs. It has an oversized date that's only possible because two discs are superimposed. Otherwise, if this were just one disc, the watch would be 50 millimeters in diameter. It would be huge. So here's the Moser branded crown. Turn it all over because you don't really need 
need to know the leap year phase too often, Andreas Striller hit it on the case back and used this little push adjuster on the side to adjust the leap year phase. Two mainspring barrels, like the Moser pocket watches of the 19th and early 20th century, we have a three-quarter style bridge. It's not a three-quarter because you can see it's split for easier service, but it reads as a three-quarter. We also have the arbors for the barrels set in golden chiton fixed by screws. That's another pocket watch design feature. You can also see that they use a unique double crested coat de Genève across the bridges. Uh, that's a signature of the brand's finishing. The screw heads are all black polished. And then you can see that there is a bevel that has been executed on the balance bridge as well as the edges of the other bridges and all wheels are satinated. Though the watch features both the barrel arbors and the drivetrain jewels set in chatons, so there's quite a bit of nostalgia here, although at the limit chaton in the modern era do add a little bit of shock resistance. You get far more shock resistance from the balance structure, which is a dual anchored full balance bridge that's free sprung, and they're not trying to hide inaccuracy in any physical testing position. Most watches are only tested, if they're high horology or chronometer watches, to five positions. It's that sixth untested position where a lot of brands hide all the crap, so to speak. And in that one position, the watch will run terribly. But if you test to dial up, dial down, crown up, crown down, crown left, and crown right, six positions gives deviation and inaccuracy, no place in which to hide. Now, Moser makes all parts of this movement, with the exception of stones and shock protection. They make the hairspring, the balance, and the escapement. The escapement is 14 karat gold, and it works with minimal lubrication to extend the power reserve and the interval between services. The hairspring is a handmade overcoil, so the watch keeps good time in any of those six positions. The balance is their own and the architecture of this movement, somewhere between a pocket watch and a wristwatch, beautifully deluxe, and it beats way at a very aesthetically pleasing 18,000 vibrations per hour, water resistant 30 meters. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.